would turn to the book of Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 3, and we're going to raise up one verse, verse 31, Judges, chapter 3, verse 31. Uh, those who are able, if you could stand to honor God, uh, it goes like this, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, amen. If you need one more book, I know you know Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, hallelujah. There you go, right there, amen. And if you don't know that, there's a thing called the concordance in your Bible, and it'll show you where to go, amen. Take it a page number and everything. Judges chapter 3 verse 31 reads and after him was Shamgar the son of Anath which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox gold and he also delivered Israel Lord we ask for your blessings upon your word and allow me to bring the word like only you can Allow me not to try to match or outdo 8 o'clock. Allow me not to even try to preach it the way it went at 8 o'clock. Allow your spirit to move. Reduce me down to my least common denominator so that you may multiply yourself within me and hide me behind your sacred destiny, your anointing under the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Speak through me, Lord, and not allow me to speak on my own. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. As you take your seat, I want to speak to the subject of who's your daddy? who's your daddy the amazing thing about men is a lot of times we do our job some of us most of us do our job but we don't talk like women if a woman does something you know about it because she's sure enough gonna tell you what she did men a lot of times work in the background and say nothing at all in fact women are great communicators in fact what we do is we internalize our thoughts process and get it together then we speak y'all speak all day long and work out your issues out loud amen and a lot of times you think that we don't care about anything but we process internally you process externally not saying one is better than the other one but we ain't gonna use a whole bunch of words and a lot of times we feel like our fathers don't love us because they don't communicate but the lights that he paid the bill for don't clap for him the bills he paid don't clap for him he's silent so a lot of times we see so and so begot so and so and so and so begot so and so if that father didn't do anything I promise you he never would have had his name mentioned but as we move on, I just want to talk to you. Let me read up the verse one more time. After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. <clears throat> that is all the press Shamgar gets in Scripture. But this one byline tells us everything we need to know about him. One daring decision and one farm implement result in deliverance for the entire nation of Israel. This one risk turned 15 minutes of fame into a model of courage that still inspires three millennia later. Israel was in a state of spiritual anarchy and political tyranny. They did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord, and the punishment was enslavement to the Philistines, who ruled by fear and intimidation. But one man refused to be ruled by unrighteousness. He decided to disrupt the status quo, and he did it with an ox gold. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? See, the problem with us is we try to be like everybody else. You got to use whatever God has anointed you with. If you can sing, sing. If you can play play if you can worship worship see people will make you feel bad as a preacher if you can't do everything they say do you sing no I don't but I got a choir I got a praise team I got a band I don't get up here and try to do what it is I'm not I'm not good at doing every preacher don't need to sing in fact some preacher that sing can't sing be quiet and bring a word stop trying to be like everybody else you know what I believe a lot of us the anointing that we have is just sitting on the sideline waiting on us twiddling his thumb and say you know what baby when you be yourself I'm going to jump right up in you but as long as you're trying to be somebody else I don't know who you are stop trying to be everybody else and use whatever God has gifted you with whatever God has given you or whatever tools he gave you whatever you are good at do it David next to David Sam God has to rank as one of history's most improbable heroes 
And just like the shepherd turned king, this farmer turned warrior transformed a tool of his trade into a weapon of war. I don't think David had any idea when he was tending the sheep that God would use the skill he had with a sling to catapult him into national limelight. And I don't think Shamgar had a clue while he was driving oxen that God would turn his ox go into the instrument of Israel's deliverance. See, it doesn't matter what you have. Just use it. See, 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 Shamgar had no army, no alliance, and no artillery. All he had was an ox goat, a long stick used by a farmer to prod his animals, but he did not let what he could not do keep him from doing what he could. After all, God plus one equals a majority, and if God is for you, who can be against you? So Shamgar grabbed his ox goat and charged the enemy. He looked as foolish as David looked when David ran out there with a rag and a rock. I'm sure uh, I'm sure brother Gilliam they looked at David and said oh Lord he gonna die he going out there he can't hold a sword he can't hold the armor he can't hold the shield he going out there with some shorts of some flip flops and a sling he gonna die today but it's amazing that when you use what God has given you and you do it with the anointing God has put on your life he'll turn a rag and a rock to a prolific weapon he'll use your singing ability to bring you before kings and queens he'll use your cooking ability to open up doors. Whatever you're good at, baby, stop trying to be like everybody else and be yourself. God will use you. Whatever gift he gave you, it was used to open up doors. All he had was an ox go. Faith looks crazy sometimes. All he had was an ox gold to go out and fight 600 Philistines. He had to look out of his mind. But faith will make you do some things that don't make no sense. It's a fine line between crazy and faith. Now some folk are just crazy, but some folk with faith look crazy, but they're not crazy because God has given you the power. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God is greater than any enemy that will come against you, and he will use anything he put in you as a gift. And see, what I don't understand is why the Bible, even the Bible don't give a lot of credit because somebody taught Shamgar how to use that spear. Somebody taught Shamgar how to use that goat. His daddy taught him what to do. That's why he said and the scripture says and Shamgar the son of Amhad because at the end of the day baby your daddy taught you something. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? He didn't do it with a whole bunch of talking. He didn't do it with a whole bunch of what you thought was affectionate love but he did it baby. The lights don't say amen but they pay. The gas don't say amen but it's paid. I know your mama call you at school and make you feel good but most of the time his daddy's checkbook that got you there. You better start honoring your fathers and understand that he may not talk all the time and love you all the time the way you want to be loved, but he loving you in the background and making sure that oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Shamgar was taught how to use the ox gold by his father. Now, I'm sure he probably didn't go out there and teach him how to kill men, but one thing I know, baby, I'd rather fight a man than an ox. Uh-huh. I'd rather fight a man than an ox. An ox is in the same family with a bull. You ain't found no fighting no lazy cow. You, you, you fight an ox. And truth be told, even if you look at David's daddy, he might not have been the best daddy and kept him in the field. But the job he gave, David trained him to fight the lion. If he could fight lions and bears, he wasn't worried about no giant. Come on, somebody. If a lion run up on you and you kill it, I used to get upset because God told me to live in those apartments in the ghetto. And I lived in the ghetto for so for, for, for two years dealing with, with, with green forest because God told me to move there. Even though I could have got a house that was worth $750,000 at a foreclosed price of $200,000. But God said, no, you can't have that. And I was so mad that my pastor even let me move in there. But lo, baby, if I could fight lions and bears and have dope dealers coming to me, threatening me on my life, and they had guns and could kill me, one dope dealer told me I was going to kill you because I know you're the one called the police on me but because you take care of my son I let you go come on somebody I ain't worried about no letters I ain't worried about you coming against me God trained me my daddy didn't let me come home crying he sent me back out there if you get beat up baby you better take your behind back down there and go fight again the problem with this world why we got these broke back mountain negroes walking around here is because men aren't allowed to make men. The world makes us scared of real men and want to walk around with sissies. 
I told y'all at 8 o'clock, you might want to put your children where they need to be in Sunday school and children's church because this ain't going to be no, this going to be rated PG-13, baby. I'm trying to talk to some grown folk today. Y'all mama, the world mamas these men to death. These boys to death. And you wonder why they go to jail. You wonder why they get arrested. You wonder why they can't keep a job. Because you mama them to death and didn't let daddy make him a man. And some of y'all crazy women out here with, with, with baby daddies who actually want to see their kids. Who cares if your relationship didn't work? Stop using that kid to fight that man. If that man trying to be with his kid, stop being ignorant. You Jezebel spirit crazy woman. I ain't here to be nice today. I ain't saying every father is good, but what I'm saying is that man trying to see his child, whether your relationship worked or not, stop using that child as a weapon to make that man sad. You ain't doing nothing but hurting that child. I'm tired of this mess, and the church don't want to address nothing. There you go. They're going on the children church. I'm sorry. Go ahead, baby. Go, you good. Go ahead. You're doing good. Anybody else want to go let their kids go? You ain't going to bother me at all. This rated PG-13 today, baby. I'm going to keep it real. Everybody laughed at David until they saw in his eyes he wasn't playing. They laughed at Shamgar when he came out there with an the October. When they saw 500 jokers fall to the wayside, I'm sure they started getting worried. God will use a rag and a rock. God will use a stick. God will use your anointed to sing. God will use your preaching. God will use whatever it is he gifted you to do with to move mountains and change the world. One person can move a city. One person can move the world. If they use what God gifted them with and stop trying to be like everybody else. I ain't T.D. Jakes. I ain't Joel Osteen. I, I ain't none of them people. I'm going to preach how I want to preach. If you don't like me, find another church because I'm going to do whatever God has told me to do and I'm going to do it the way my personality feels. In fact, what you need to do is stop hating and say, you know what, God, if you can use that crazy Negro that ain't got no sense, that don't know how to control his tongue, that say stuff out of order, if you can use him, God, I know you can use me. Stop getting mad because God used crazy folk. Because God said, I used the foolishness of man to confine the wise. God don't use nobody who got it all together. God don't call to qualify. He qualifies the called. He, he grand, exhausted. And courage doesn't wait until situational factors turn in one's favor. It doesn't wait until a plan is perfectly formed. It doesn't wait until the tide of popular opinion is turned. Courage only waits for one thing, a green light from God. And when God gives the go, it's full steam ahead. No questions asked. See, you got to move when God say move. When God told me to move on in touch, and I love Newport News because they do take care of us. But I'm going to tell the whole story. I swear to tell the truth. And nothing but the truth, so help me God. And the city said they was going to pay. Mr. McCord, they said they were going to pay for the in-touch event. And so I said, oh, yeah, they're going to pay for it. And then all of a sudden in the background, I heard the idle chatter and the white noise going on behind the scenes saying the city not going to pay for it. They ain't going to move. But I still had to keep moving. I couldn't lose my courage because God had already said it was going to get paid. Now, the city didn't pay for it, but the police foundation and Ferguson stepped up to the plate. And you got to understand, I didn't have time to make it all right, but I did know this. I can't sing to you, baby, but mama and daddy gave me the gift of gab, and I talked my way through it because God used my gift of gab and my talking to make sure I got some alliances together and made sure they took care of it. And then the city finally got right and said, you know what? We gonna pay the police to be there so everybody gonna be where they need to be. Y'all better watch out. When you got favor with God, you can't wait. Oh, you don't, all you need is an ox go. All you need is your mouth. All you need is your personality. You don't need nothing else but God and yourself. God plus one is a majority. That's why I don't mind 
stepping in the rooms where people don't agree with me. I don't worry about anything that comes against me because if God be for me, who in heaven or the other place can be against me? You better watch out, baby. When you begin to run up on somebody who's been trained by God, see, God don't send you to military school. God will have you out there fighting lions and bears. God had me in the ghetto, baby, dealing with dope dealers and killers. You think a church conference bother me? Folk done threatening my life. All you threatening is my reputation. It don't bother me. Some folk done told me they was going to kill me. But oh, thank God the training God gives me. Oh, some more children left. I'm sorry. I, I told you I'm here to preach today. We got children church for everybody 13 and younger. And, Amen. In God's kingdom, calling always trumps credentials every time. It always, it doesn't matter. The litmus test isn't experience or expertise. It's availability and teachability. If you are willing to go when God gives you the green light, he will take you to inaccessible places and do impossible things. It don't matter what the world calls impossible. If you serve God, everything that's impossible to other folk is possible to you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Don't you tell me what I can't do because the Bible said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He who began a good work in me shall finish it. It doesn't matter what enemy comes at me if they come at me like a flood my God shall stick closer than me than any brother sister mother or father even if I make my bed in hell my God is with me you know God says that many are called but few are chosen but you know who really chosen those who are chosen are those who step up if you step up you get chosen all you got to do is step up God calls everybody to do something God has a purpose for everybody but some of us not going to get well done my good and faithful servant because we didn't have the in, we didn't have the audacity we didn't have the intestinal fortitude to step up to the plate because it's not you that's got to do the job it's God Isaiah uh, says in chapter 6, verse 8, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will I go for us? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Samuel, David, Isaiah, they all have one thing in common. They said, Here am I. Isn't it ironic we spend so much time and energy trying to figure out how to get where God wants us to go when all we have to do is say, here I am. All we got to do is say yes. All we got to do is say, God, I'll go. It's God's job to get the job done. He who began a good work in you shall finish it. He's the author and finisher of your faith. All you got to do is show up. The fight is fixed just like the WWF, just like wrestling. He already know you're going to win. you going to win if you step up. The fight is fixed. Yeah. See, you got to be like Paul, Sister Mary, and say, it ain't good for you to boast. But Paul said, if you're going to boast, boast in the Lord. Let God know that it's going to happen. Let God know that it's him. He's the author and finisher of your faith. Step to the plate and let your enemies know that he will begin a good work and you shall finish it. And you ain't worrying about it. You know that God didn't never say the weapon wouldn't be formed. But he said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You got to know that people going to come against you. Just like Haman came against Esther and Mordecai. But at the end of the day, baby, your enemy it will go to the gallows as long as you step up like a doctor on call or a police officer on duty or a firefighter on shift it's our readiness to respond that God is looking for sometimes it's a calling to move halfway around the world but it's always start with this three word prayer here am I let God know that you, he can use you. Let God know that you're available and he'll use you. Let him know that you will be a vessel for him. Let him know that all you got to do is anoint you with oil and you will step up to the plate. Ah. See, see, you thought it was you. Moses couldn't talk. He talked like Emma Fudd. Couldn't get his words together. Stuttered. Mm, was, mm, mm, 
couldn't get his words out. Was so messed up, God said, don't call me El Shaddai. Don't call me El Elio. Don't call me Jehovah Jireh. Don't call me Jehovah Nisi. You so special and you so retarded. Just call me I am. I know you can get I am educated. And God used Moses. He used Caleb because all he said was I will step up when he stepped foot in the private in the, in the, in the promised land. Isaiah couldn't stop cussing folk out. But when King Uzziah died, he said, send me, Lord. I don't care how messed up you are. God will use you. Samson can leave Delilah alone, but God use him. David can leave nobody alone, but God use him. Noah can leave the E&J alone, but God used him, even though he was messed up. Stop making excuses. You know why we make so many excuses? Because we mama to death. See, daddy will tell you the truth. See, you marching, like I said in one sermon, you can be on the wrong foot. The whole band can be on the right. You can be on the left. Your mama going to say that whole band messed up. They need to follow my baby. Your daddy will be like, boy, if you don't get yourself together and stop making me look crazy and do this right because I ain't raised no dumb child, you better get on the right foot and go to practice like I told you to. And we get mad at fathers because our mother mothers are the devil and sometimes women get out the way so he can make that man a man tired of society glorifying homosexuality making it look like it's a fad or it's an end thing I'm not hating on homosexuals that's your problem but it sure ain't mine but what I'm saying is I fall short like everybody else but I can't condone it I'm tired of real men being ostracized I'm tired of real men being, being people being afraid of them oh y'all don't hear me or oh, if you think I'm lying about it, tweet that and see how many people unfollow you and me. Tweet that and see how the world really is. God made you fearfully and wonderfully. God didn't call you to be no punk. Let a man be a man. Truth be told. Yeah. Yeah. We don't celebrate father because we don't celebrate manhood. The truth be told, the reason a lot of y'all didn't like me because you thought you were going to get some little young punk that was going to let you run all over him and do what it is you thought you could do. But when he came down here and stood flat-footed and said, I don't care if you're with me or not, I know the God who I'm going to serve. I don't know about you and your house, but as far as me and my house, I'm going to do what the Lord said. No. It, it ain't me. You ain't had nothing against me. You had something against real men. That's the problem. You used to women everywhere and broke back mountain brothers. That's what you used to. That, that, that's what you want. Yeah. David said, teach my fingers to war. David wasn't playing. If you ran up on David playing the heart, you might thought he was soft, but run up on him if you want to. Oh, you might see me crying every now and then, wailing to God, letting him know I'm vulnerable. But if you step up on me, baby, you might get shot down. See? See, some of y'all think that Christianity is a spectator sport. You should not be bored as a Christian. If you're a real Christian, you're going to be fighting some lion, tigers, and bears. You're going to have some scandals coming at you. The devil going to come at you every now and then. When the devil don't come at you, it's because you're on his team. Yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't know, we didn't, we, we, we didn't know how, how Westbrook really felt about Durant until he went to another team. Yeah. When you're playing on devil's team, he don't mess with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to understand, the devil fears a man. I don't want to put down women, but the man is the head. Not saying that's your job, but the head of the house is the man. The, the, the God didn't even get mad when Eve ate the apple or the fruit first. He got upset when the man ate it because he's the head. He should have told her to do better. You know what the problem is with the men? When a woman got a short skirt, tell her to buy a longer one. You are the one that have the minion. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, it's our fault. Women can't be women until men be men. Truth be told, we got a dominion. Uh-huh, we do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, we do. And, and, and the problem with the church is we, we, we got to stop. Air, uh, I'm, I'm. We, we, we got to stop 
hating folk. We got to stop talking about people when they come in with a short skirt. Tell them, baby, you know what? You can get one a little longer than that. And we love you, but, but you know, you ain't got to show everybody your goodness just yet. You know, you know, let them wonder about what's there. Give them some mystery. It's the reason why they call it the secret garden. Come on, somebody. You got to meet people where they are. You can't get mad and cuss out folk when they come in here with their pants down. You got to say, brother, I love you, but we got to meet you where they are. And we need you to get your pants up so you can get a job. Islam, they got it down. They'll do, they'll give him a suit, a bow tie, pull his pants up, give him a belt, and give him some bean pies to sell. Now, I ain't saying give him no bean pie, but what I am saying is help that man get where he needs to be. But the problem is, we don't let men be men. And when the man, when the old child and been mama to death, and he run into a coach or an administrator, they're telling me he need to get his stuff together. You come up there with your hair rollers in your hair, tell me stop messing with my baby. And when you don't let the coach or the administrator correct them, then the police beat them down and put them in jail. I'm not saying that they wrong all the time, but a lot of times it's because we ain't raised our children to be quiet in the face of authority because we let them run all over us. We trying to be their friend and not their mama. But if you let daddy be daddy, I promise you, it'll get it right. Oh. You got to say, here I am. Shamgar may have been the least qualified person to deliver Israel. For starters, he's likely wasn't even an Israelite. His name is Horinian. Horinian in origin. He could have rationalized inaction in a dozen different ways. He could have said, I don't know. I don't have the right weapon. I can't do this myself. These aren't even my people. If we look for an excuse, we're going to find one. If we don't, we won't. When it comes to excuses, we are infinitely creative. What if we channeled that creativity into finding solutions instead of finding excuses? If we did, we'd be an instrument of deliverance just like Shamgar. When God stirs our spirit or breaks our heart, we cannot just sit back. We have to step up and step in. We've got to go all in by going all out. You know why a lot of us can't understand God? Because God is the Father. God ain't soft. God will punish you when you do wrong. He'll chastise you and get you in line. He said, my rod and his staff shall comfort me. Sometimes that rod is for you. See, the shepherd had a shepherd's cook. It had a, it had a hook on it. And he used this. He used Use the staff to, to, to get the, the, the lions and tigers and bears oh my away, but then he used that hook to pull the sheep back in. And sometimes yanking you in to give you more whiplash than pushing you back. Sometimes God put some wood on your backside. And the reason why you can't understand God is because you ain't let a father be a father. Mama, daddy kept busting at me and you want to go leave him alone. Shut up, woman, and let that man make that man real. I don't care if you don't say amen. Get mad. I'm going to say it anyway. I'm embedded in your music, and when you listen to Uncle Charlie, you're going to hear it let hit a sermon subliminally so you can let your husband be a man and raise your children. See, it's a balance. Women going to pacify the children a little bit more than the men, and the man going to bring the realness. If you don't let the man bring realness to your child, when they walk into the world, they ain't going to understand why they got fired because you keep coming late. That's what I be wondering about church folk when they come here, don't show up for a job, and wonder why I fired them. You ain't doing your job. I'm supposed to keep you. You ain't doing that, but I'm supposed to keep you. See, the problem is some people expect that from the church because they've been mama to death. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You, you, hopefully you don't expect that at your job. Why you expect it at this job? No, nah, baby. See, the problem is we don't let our children be exposed to real men in the house. We keep sheltering them and keep mumming in the death. And anytime the man put the wood, I ain't saying abuse, anytime the man put the wood on their backside, you want to call the police. But the Bible said you spat a rod. Come on, somebody. The... Ooh, them children, they rubbing their arms. I don't want no whipping. Jesus. See, you never know what relationship, skill, or experience are attribute 
God will use to bring about his eternal purposes. He used a beauty pageant to strategically position Esther as queen of Persia and stop the genocide of the Jews. He used Nehemiah's diligence as a cupbearer to position him for royal favor that would parlay into the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. He used David's musical ability to open up the palace doors and give him access to the king of Israel. He used Joseph's imprisonment and his ability to interpret dreams to save two nations from a famine. And he used the zeal of a mass murderer named Saul to spread the gospel via three missionary journeys while writing half of the New Testament from prison. God used all them and he'll use you with your messed up self. And he wants to use you. In fact, he's cultivating talents within you that will serve kingdom purposes in ways that you are totally unaware of right now. It may be your God-given athletic abilities or musical proclivity that God uses to give uh, you a platform to give him praise. It may be your creative genius. It may be your idiosyncrasy. Or it could be your good old fashioned work ethic. No matter what it is, it's a gift from God that is to be used for God. Be the best you you can be. Can't nobody beat you at being you. That's my definition of success. It's not based on circumstances. It's not based on wealth or power or platform. And it's not based on past experience or future potential. It's stewarding every opportunity in every way, every day, every second of time, every ounce of talent, every penny of money. Success is curated by being a good steward over your time, talent, and treasure. You don't need to change jobs. You don't need to change circumstances. You just need to change you. That's all. God is cultivating gifts in you. See, I'm not sure what went through Shamgar's mind when he picked up the ox gold and picked the fight with the enemy, but I think he made a decision that if he was going to go down, he was going down with a fight. And that's the key to deliverance. Whether it's from the Philistines, pride, gossip, or whatever, you've got to go on the offense. You've got to pick a fight. You've got to plan an invasion. There comes a point when you say enough is enough. you got to be like Popeye and say, that's all I can stand and I can't stand no more. Get your Christian spinach in your word of God and get up off your best assurance and go kick in the gates of hell. You know why, Sister Drone, you know why, Reverend Drone, that the, that, that the church keep getting invaded by Satan? Because we keep playing defense. They say defense wins games, and it does, but if you don't have some offense with it, you're going to lose. Peyton Manning would take it this way. I know you need defense, but if you don't score, you're going to lose. The problem with the church is we sit back in our pews, don't do nothing, put our hats on and our ties on, play patty cake, and wait on the devil to come in and fight him when he get here. The devil ain't got no reason of being in the church because we're supposed to be on the offense. It says, uh, uh, it says, uh, uh, Sister Ross, it says we're supposed to be kicking in the gates of hell, which means we're supposed to be infiltrating the territory. See, we're supposed to be going to the hood, bringing folk. If the hood come here first, they're coming to rob us. You got to go into the world and bring them. We said that we love Jesus because he first loved us. You know why they don't love the church? Because we didn't love them first. We cussed them out and told them they were disrespecting the church when they had their pants down. We ostracized them when they had short skirts. We didn't meet them in love. So they don't love us because we didn't love them first. The world is messed up, but it's our fault because the church is not going in the highways and byways and taking over territory from the devil. The, the, the church is not going in the hood. The church wondered why we got a bad game our tournament. That ain't got nothing to do with God. It's evangelism, damn it. I don't care, I ain't trying to be. I told you to rate PG. This is men's day, all right? This this men, I'm talking to the men. They want to hear this. They don't want to hear me talking about patty cake, patty cake. Why you got to go with the police? Because they shooting us. And I need to make sure I'm in the room. If something ever goes wrong, you thought I was your friend, baby, but if you shoot the wrong person for the wrong reason, I'm right there in the house anyway. You got to understand, you got to be an inside man. Remember that movie, movie by Denzel Washington, Inside Man? He was talking to the criminals and the police. So he was on the inside of both worlds. That's how he was able to manipulate the situation. If you ain't in the world, God say be in the world, but don't be of the world. You got to be so taken over territory. I don't want, Sister Shirley, I don't want 
the angels talking about me, talking about what is man that you're mindful of him. You made everything to be subject under his feet, yet they don't walk in the authority. I don't want them talking about me. I want to walk in the authority that God has given me. I want to walk with power and not fear. I want to walk in power and not timidness. I want to walk with a sound mind and walk in the footsteps of God, not cowering back and trying to hide in my pew. I know we talk about the prodigal son that went out and got caught in the pig pen, but what the prod- what about the prodigal son that just sat at home in the pew judging everybody? Every time somebody do something and it don't work, they back there talking about you. I don't care. Maybe you didn't get dirty. Maybe you didn't go do nothing, but all you did was sit there. You part of the problem. I'm going to tell y'all this, and now I'm going to talk about a conversation. This is me talking. This is me. And every time I preach and you get your feet stepped on, it ain't me. But I'm going to admit when it's me, this is me. Ushers, deacons, trustees, anybody in leadership, anybody in the church, stop complaining about how out of order prayer is when we're praying and we're bringing people in. Stop complaining. Would you rather prayer not happen? Or would you want to be part of the solution that make the prayer be in order? I'm tired of hearing ignorance from my leaders. Keep talking. You ain't going to be here. God said my house shall be a house of prayer. He don't care if I preach or not. He don't care if you sing or not. But he wants you to be able to pray. I remember that day I told y'all to face each other, brother Carl, and everybody was looking at each other. I said pray and y'all were looking at me like I was speaking a foreign language. How dare you complain about prayer? Makes no sense. Call me if you want to. I don't care. I don't understand. People just be walking. Well, make them sit down. Do the usher. God said don't move when you pray. Keep order. But if they... If you shut your mouth and usher folk to their seat, It'll be all right. Because one thing about the church, we don't pray enough. We have a whole bunch of meetings. We have a whole bunch of auxiliaries. We got a whole bunch of ministry. We got a whole bunch of revivals. We got a whole bunch of community events. We got a whole bunch of stuff we do, but we don't pray enough. We always say, you going to complain about prayer? Help get it in order. Back to the sermon. See, see, y'all got to understand that. I'm a real man. I ain't got to hide behind no sermon. It was me this time. Now I'm back under the anointing. Hopefully I was still anointed, but I'm letting you know I am talking about a situation and more than one. So don't get mad because it's more than just you. Can I get back? All right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Soup. Back under the anointing. The good news is this. You are only one decision away from a totally different life. One risk can revolutionize your life. One change can change everything. If you start small and consistent, anything is possible. A 1% chance given and done long enough will make a 99% difference in your life. You know what I realized? Uh, You know what I realized? Uh, brother easily I realized the reason why I got a little bigger it wasn't because I I, I didn't work out as much as I used to because sometimes I even work out more the problem was I made a one percent change in a negative way when I was at home I ain't drink nothing but water but then the deacon and the deacon was bringing me Kool-Aid and soda pop and milkshakes and anything I wanted because I ain't going to spend my money on junk. I eat the junk you bring me though. I noticed that. And because I drank more than water, that began to add on fat because I'm taking in sugars I never experienced before. One percent change. Now I'm going back to just drinking water so please don't get upset when I say don't bring it to me. I I don't buy cake but they always bring it. I can be trying to get up out of here. Y'all got all these taste tests and y'all be bringing eat this pudding, eat this I ain't eat all that stuff. That's why I'm getting fat and out of shape. You loving me to death, literally. (laughs) You can't leave change to chance. 
You've got to grab your ox gold and go for it. Cut up your credit card. Register for a marathon. Apply to school. Take a mission trip. Good intentions aren't good enough. You need to make the call or make the move. You need to set the deadline or set the appointment. See, you know what happened? If Shamgar uh, had a focused on the fact that he was going up against 600 Philistines, uh, Sister Easley, I doubt if he would have went out and fought anybody. Because 600 is a lot. He had to go kill them one by one. See, what the devil does is he plays tricks with our mind. Deacon Dawson, what he'll do is try to overwhelm us and make us look at everything instead of one thing. <clears throat> See, God says, don't, Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow before tomorrow will worry about itself. Handle today. Alcoholics Anonymous will take you this way. I don't know if you can stop being an alcoholic for the rest of your life, but I know you can stop being an alcoholic today. Take it one day at a time. Compartmentalize one day, one hour at a time. You might can't conquer your whole life, but you can conquer today. And when you wake up tomorrow, conquer that day. Stop worrying about tomorrow. I'm not saying don't plan, but I'm saying don't dwell on what is going to happen if this happened and that happened. It ain't happened yet. Worry about right Plenty of people have died worrying about tomorrow. Not saying worrying about tomorrow did it, but what I'm saying is worrying about tomorrow, they ain't even make it to tomorrow. Handle what you can handle today. Go to sleep and hopefully you wake up the next morning. Oh, he uses to overwhelm us to discourage us. See, see, look at this. Look, Live one day at a time, like I said, but look, because it's in your DNA. You're more than a conqueror. See, look, you know, you know, 50 to 500 million sperm Try to get to the egg at one time. You beat 499,999 other jokers. So even if your daddy just gave you DNA and ain't there, he did something. Huh? Huh? He, 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 he got you there. <laughs> you a survivor. You already more than a conqueror. You know it's a better chance of going to the NBA than you, the individual that you are, made it here. 499,999, 499,999,000 was running just like you. You made it. You the DNA that made it. You are more than a conqueror. If you are, you are one in 500 million. And you worried about being like somebody else. 499,999,999 folk didn't make it over you. I don't know why black people are scared of water. You swam the first time. <laughs> you, I'm sorry. You made it, child. Hallelujah. <laughs> you won in 500 million. If your daddy didn't do nothing else, you need to honor him because it's his DNA that made you who you are. But the text lets us know that Shamgar was the son of Anna. As much is not written about fathers because, like I said, fathers don't talk. See, when a woman does something, you show up going to know it because she'll say, Pastor, you didn't call my name. Why, well, surely if it got, did you do it for yourself or God? Hallelujah. Amen, sister. But the men, when they do it, they don't be looking for all that. If they do it, they doing it because they want to do it. One thing you ain't going to make too many real men do is something they don't want to do. Because we're not emotional. We process it first. When a man joined the church, not saying women join for the wrong reason, but when a man joined the church, I know he joined the church because that's where he want to be because he done sat through it, processed it, watched me, watched the church, watched everything, and made a carnal-minded decision. Not saying a corner mind decision as well, but what I'm saying is he deducted. He didn't make an emotional decision. He didn't just move because of one sermon. He came and he sized everything up. Shamgar was the, was the son of Anath. Anath is the one that gave him the spear in the first place. Your daddy is teaching you some things 
that he ain't even, you don't even understand he's doing. I understand now why I don't worry about church conferences, why I don't worry about people talking to me in the community because my daddy never let me win anything. You know how people be acting like you running for a touchdown and they, and they act like they missed the ball when you shooting my daddy five years old. Wait. <laughs> Throw it in the woods. Strike me out. Hit the ball hard. About to knock my teeth out. They never let me win. Had me cutting grass at five years old. I'm taking no lie. And this white lady came out there and grabbed me and told my daddy, if he out there cutting the grass again by himself, I'm going to call child the protective services. The next day, me and my mom was cutting grass. <laughs> you with me, push it. <laughs> push it together. What? I ain't lying. Y'all think I ain't lying. He made me real. And we lost that. You can't do it today because you will go to jail and you might get shot. But let me come in there crying because somebody beat me up. Boy, you better go outside and go fight him again. If you come back in here crying, I'm going to fight you myself. We were allowed to make warriors. Sham God was a warrior because his daddy taught him how to handle the oxen. If I can handle a, 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 a yoke of oxen, I can show handle you. Line me up with Shaq or ox. Uh, go hit Shaq right in the mouth. I might not win, but I'm sure ain't going to win. If I can't beat Shaq, I can't beat no ox. Your daddy, if you allow the men to be men, to put you in situations that'll get you ready to train. David might not have had the best daddy, but putting him in there with the sheep, he was able to kill lions and bears with his bare hands, so Goliath was no problem. The problem is we send boys out in men positions that we done mama to death because we didn't let the daddy be a man to make him a man. I'm trying to talk to somebody. I know this ain't just hopefully somebody gets saved in the midst of the sermon. But I got to tell you, my dad instilled competition in me. So it ain't never, I ain't going to never throw in the towel. The reason why in touch still going on, even though the city told me no, I kept going to somebody told me yes, because my dad didn't let me win nothing. And when I began at 15, I finally beat him. I felt like I could conquer the world. Why? Because he ain't never played games with me. He ain't never sugarcoat nothing. He made sure. And you know why I was mean when I first got here? Daddy told me, you can always be nice at the end, but go in mean so they can know you ain't. So if y'all didn't like me when I first got here, that's my daddy's fault. He said, you can always step back and be nicer, but it's hard to step up and be more stern. Go in and don't play with nobody when you first get there. Right. But we want a mama them to death. And we wonder why they can't win no battles. David said, teach my fingers to war. As I said earlier, if you're teaching my fingers to war, you didn't talk my whole body. If I can war you with one finger, come on, somebody. You sure enough made a warrior. God, David said, don't make me soft. Don't make me scared. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because your rod and your staff comfort me. He understood what a father was. He knew God wasn't going to play with him, so he sure enough knew God wasn't going to play with his enemies. Oh, sham God. The son of Anath. Men aren't talked about in great detail, but I promise you they did something. They just didn't keep talking about it. They did it and did it in the background. They didn't, you don't hear about, about all the things that, that Israel did and all the things uh, and all the things that Isaac did with Jacob and Esau. You don't hear all the details into the blessing. You don't hear all those different things. You don't hear all the stuff Jacob did for his sons. You don't see all that. You hear some of the stuff at the end. Why? Because men will tell you to do it. And why? Because I told you so. They ain't going to keep telling you all that nurturing stuff. A woman to keep talking to you, making you feel good, even when you ain't right sometimes. Like I said, mama's going to tell you how good you did and you messed up. Daddy's going to say, get it right. And so you keep running to mama. But mama, when daddy speak, you need to let him have the authority. Because truth be told, God holds that man far more accountable than he holds you. 
Y'all were the first ones to eat the fruit. Just let y'all know that secret. Y'all started the whole thing. But God didn't hold you accountable. He held the man accountable. When the man ate it, he was like, what did I tell you? I ain't even tell her that. I told you. Now, I know it's a lot of women in high places, so don't, don't go to your job talking about she's supposed to submit to you. No, your wife. And really, y'all both equal because you're supposed to submit. As she submits to you, as you follow God, you're supposed to love her like Christ loved the church. And Christ died for the church. So even though she's supposed to submit to you, she's submitting to you because you're doing everything that God wants to do. And sometimes you might change your opinion if it's in order of God. Because you're going to let your woman have your way if it don't matter. Because you're supposed to what? Make a sacrifice. So this scripture that, that women are supposed to be submitted to their husband is not for you to beat over her head. But it's for her to know that she's supposed to follow you as you follow Christ. Some women can't follow us because we ain't following Christ. As we follow Christ, she needs to stop. Now, if, you, if he following Christ and you ain't following him, the Jezebel in you somewhere. Shamgar was the son of Anath. And I'm, 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 I'm about to, to end this right now because what I want y'all to know is men are not emotional. Most of us aren't that emotional. And we do things because that's what it's supposed to do and we don't make a big fuss about it. Like I said, the, the likes ain't gonna say amen when the bill pays. I need all the fathers and all the people that, 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 that are father figures to somebody. I need y'all to stand up and, 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 and line up around the walls and, and around here. Amen. All the way. Remember, like I'm going to do this early. Remember how you did in football? Just in case there ain't enough people, go like this. And, and make sure, you know, spread yourself out. Spread around. I need all the men because I need you to understand once they get in line, men who are fathers or father figures to anybody. You might be a preacher, you might be a digging, you might not have kids, but, but line up everywhere. Even back there too, I need, I need y'all to make a full circle. You might can't touch everybody, but come around here. Some right there, there you go. Amen, amen, amen. You might not be able to hold hands, I'm not sure you can try. I need some people over here. Come on now, y'all making my, think y'all special. Go that way. You, you might can't hold, you may cannot hold everybody hand, but you can line up all the way around. Let, and let go of his hand and walk that way. You right there. Y'all two right there, walk that way. Walk that way. Walk toward Deacon Bridge. Deacon Bridge, raise your hand. There you go. Look at you, y'all so smart. Now y'all doing so well. See, there you go. Look at y'all. Y'all might can hold hands. Y'all might can, but there you go. There you go. Look, look. Take up. You see that? It's too much space between there. You might have to let go of the hand. You ain't got to hold the hand. Let go. Let go. Just, just make sure it's, it ain't no. There you go. There you go. Look at. Stop. Stop. You stop. There you go. Right. Look at y'all. Hallelujah, Jesus. You might can't hold everybody's hand. I don't know if you can or not. But what I want to show you is men are constantly covering you. Get the oil, because I need the women. The women ministers, get the oil. It's some in that drawer, in that drawer somewhere. They can easily got you. I, I need y'all to understand that men don't talk. And just like I said, men don't talk. Look, if I had women up here, y'all would be like, girl, what's that to do? It's how, it'd be so loud in here. Girl, what's that to do? He got lying around here. It'd be so loud. But men don't talk. How would they want to say, if you don't shut up, I'm going in your eye. You need to talk about me. That's what they thinking. But we don't talk. We internalize what we're going on. It's not like we don't care. We just internalize it and process it first. Then we talk. I'm going to help the man out. If you fuss at your man, give him a day or two and talk about it after he processes. Because if you talk about it right there, he ain't going to say nothing. And you think he ain't communicating, but he processing all the stuff you're talking. And you know what you're doing. You're talking too much. It's too much data going in at one time. Too much to process. You done told about two, three different sides of your story. Two different, you, you do, you talk a lot. And so we can't process it. We need a day to process all that stuff. Write it down, write it nice so we can read it or something. Now women, I need you to anoint them. Get some oil in your hand, anoint the men, anoint them. Don't just stay in there. If you want that man, keep moving. Just anoint him and keep moving. I don't need you hovering. You, you might not find your husband in this circle. Anoint him and keep moving. Because what we want to do is honor fathers. Because a lot of times we don't honor them. I hate when I look at a game and everybody talking about Hey mama, you know good and well, your daddy, the only reason you're playing football is because your mama didn't want you to play. 
I don't want my baby out there. Sometimes it is just a woman, but what I'm saying is we don't honor the men like we should. He paid the bill. He didn't brag about it. You know, truth be told, ladies and, and boys, you told your daddy not to handle something and not to go to the school. You wonder why your teacher act like they got some sin because your daddy went up there anyway. But he ain't got to tell you like mama do. Plenty of times my daddy went up in the shadows and I found out he went. I wish he would have stayed in the shadows when I did wrong. He made sure he showed his face then. But a lot of times he straightened out stuff and handled situations that I ain't even know about. It was a gang that was messing with me all the time, always messing with me. You know, I, I wasn't never running from nothing, so, you know, I ain't winning all the time, but I ain't going, I ain't no punk. But I ain't know my dad had came with that and handled the situation. Had already handled the stuff in the background, and the lady told me the reason why I came here and investigated because they've been messing with everybody, but your daddy told me, so I had to get a statement and everything all right, and it protected everybody. I didn't never know he did it until I found out from somebody else. Your daddies are covering you. And you don't even know it. They in the shadows doing stuff, but they don't talk about it. They ain't talking now. You know, good and well, the women be talking right now, don't you? It'll be so loud in here. Girl, what we doing? It's so nice. Lord, we cover these men of God in the name of Jesus. We ask for you to cover them right now in the name of Jesus. Anoint them. Cover them as they work in the shadows. Bring honor to them as we honor our mothers on Mother's Day. Allow them to be honored on Father's Day. Allow them not to just get socks. Allow them to get some good presents. Allow them to be taken out to dinner or have a good meal cooked for. Honor these men of God in the name of Jesus. We ask for you to give honor what honors do. A lot of times they feel unappreciated. A lot of times we might not say nothing, but we're sitting in the shadows wondering and getting depressed because our family don't show us the same love that we show mothers. Show your fathers the same love you show your mother. They might not be as nurturing as your mother, but they're in the shadows praying for you. You see how they around here? They make a wall. Sometimes they get hit with stuff you don't even know they get hit with. Sometimes at their job, they didn't cuss their boss out, not because they didn't want to, but because they knew they couldn't lose their job to take care of you. So many times they've humbled themselves to cover you. How dare we not honor them? We honor them. We pray for you. We say thank you, fathers. Thank you, father figures. We give you the honor that you deserve. We clap for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Make the men feel good. Let's praise them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, men. We love you, men. We thank you for everything you've done. We, 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 we applaud you. We honor you. We thank you in the name of Jesus for being in the shadows. For being in the shadows.